from a living where my heart's been thrown away. I'm here lost and broken. Your loving words unspoken now. And now there's only one thing left to say. I love those kind of endings. <laughs> All right, very good. Okay, <laughs> Lamont Van Hook, this is my guest today, Lamont Van Hook. Very happy to have you on. Hey, everybody. Thanks, Kathy. You're welcome. Lamont Van Hook is an incredible singer who you've heard probably much more than you know. And, um, and uh, I, I actually came across Lamont through my friend Catherine Bostic. He was he did some uh, incredible background vocals for her, and I was totally blown away by what I heard. You know, as a singer, you know you get <laughs> sometimes you get a little bit uh, picky about the singers you hear, right? You know, mm -hmm. and. Um, I have a very high threshold for 
uh, like losing my temper, very high threshold. But it's funny, sometimes listening to singers who don't treat singing well really pisses me off. <laughs> I, understand. I understand that. So when I hear somebody good, it just totally makes me fall in love with you. Thanks, Kathy. I appreciate it. <laughs> and it's interesting, too. Your sound is... I haven't, I haven't really like noticed this about other singers, particularly. Mm -hmm. You have this sound that is, let's say your sound is this, but right in here, there's this amazing core and um, your intonation in here is uh, so heart connected. And then out here, there's this beautiful resonance, I guess you would call it. But I, I just, I haven't really noticed that about singers before. So that's that's part of why I fell in love with your singing. Well, I certainly appreciate hearing that. I think, you know, as a singer too, what we want to do is connect with people and make them feel this story that we're, we're telling, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's a big part of, of the deal, I was talking to one of my family members this weekend. Um, you were talking about uh, the tone of uh, the voice. Yeah. I think I have my grandfather's voice. Oh, um, my grandfather. My sound is a little softer. My dad is a singer as well, and my mom sings as well. My yeah. dad's voice has that Al Green, Johnny Taylor edge to it. Yeah, that I don't really have. My thing is a lot uh, smoother and area breathier yeah um, it's yeah it's just interesting genetics i think i have my uh, big daddy's voice interesting yeah yeah that's pretty cool um i wonder what wonder what makes us sing like we do as we grow up you know is it you know did you hear your grandfather sing or um you know i mean i'm sure that being around certain people or experiences does develop what we want but it's really it really boils down to what we choose and why, right? And and our environment. You know, I think a big part of my uh, sound is uh, growing up in church and going to, my mother was in a, a group with some family members and friends when I was preschool age. So I was a rehearsal baby at rehearsal every week in a church several times a week and got to study without actually thinking I was studying how different singers would connect with the congregation. Um, going to shows when I was little, I did not want toys and clothes. I wanted records and concert tickets. Uh, and my parents were really pretty good about that. So I got to go see um, iconic artists work as a kid and kind of develop that work, that work ethic and develop my love for doing it. As a young kid, so many musicians in my family, I don't think I had a chance to do anything, <laughs> anything. Both sides of my family, just huge musical talents, huge talents uh, outside of music as well. Yeah. Um, but I think for me, a lot of it was environment, of course, and then listening to the music in the house, you know, uh, soul music was big in my house. Johnny Taylor and Al Green and Aretha and Gladys were big in my house. Um, I didn't really start singing jazz or paying attention to jazz until I got to college. And then I was just taken with Billie Holiday. Uh, same thing we're talking about, Kathy. Her tone, the voice was a wreck, but the feeling behind it brought you in in 15 seconds. Yeah. You no, know? and I think that's uh, something I really concentrate on singing. I wanna, I wanna make you feel something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you've done a lot of background uh, singing. I mean, some really with some really top people. I'll show people the resume because it's kind of it, actually I'll just show them now because it's you know it's hard to just make a list, right? But it's it, it's really impressive when you look at who you've sung with: Phil Collins, Dancing with the Stars, Diana Ross, Rod Stewart. Look at all these performance credits. I mean, that's why I mean you've heard you've heard Lamont singing. Oh God, it must have been fun to sing with Mavis. 
Uh, are you kidding me? Have you sung with her a lot? Say it again. Have you sung with her a lot? Because I saw a concert mm -hmm. at um, it was a while back, but it was at the college in Malibu. Did you sing with her there? No, the gig I did with her was the NAACP Awards some years back. Yeah. And, you know, I am still a fan of music and I'm still, um, I'm still a fan. So, you know, when Mavis walked in the room, I had to calm myself down <laughs> because I grew up, you know, just digging her and her family yeah. doing the thing, right? Yeah. And she was so gracious and so sweet. You know, for TV, we taped it. Uh, we didn't tape it live. We taped it a, a week or two before it aired. Uh, yeah. So we got to do the song maybe two or three times. Yeah. And uh, after we did the final take, she came over to the singers. I think it was me and Valerie Pinkston and someone else, and I'm not quite sure. Uh, she says, you guys learned my song, and you sound like the old staple singers. We need to go on the road. And I was like, you know what, Miss Mavis, whenever you're ready, I'm ready. And uh, we haven't got the chance to do that yet, but it was wonderful working with her, and she was so generous and complimentary. You know, it's good when you meet someone you admire, and they're actually nice. Yeah. It's, you know, as opposed to the other way, which happens rarely, but it does happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she, she always she seems to me to be really, <clears throat> I think because of her music, too, because her music, like, first of all, I was really impressed. She had a guitar trio. I was like, wow, a guitar trio. Interesting. And then yeah. the music was, it wasn't the same old stuff. It was really... um it was really unique music, you know? Yeah. I mean, the genre was solid, but the, the music itself was really unique. And of course there were, she had four background singers, um, you know, and it was, she just, wow, she came across really well. She still got it, man. You know, decades in, five or six decades into her career and she's still laying it down if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite records is probably 10, 15 years old now, but Prince produced a, a CD on Mavis that is the bomb. Really? What, what yeah. do you remember the title of that? Give me a minute while we're talking. Hopefully it'll come back. Okay. The, I'll, I'll just write it down by Prince. That should be interesting to listen to. Yeah. Um, the Voice. It's called The Voice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. I'll check that mm -hmm. out. I, that sounds really interesting. It's great. It's funky. Yeah. I'm sure you have a million stories, but before we go into, we'll, we'll touch on the stories, but I, I want to, you know, talk more about you and what you're doing. And I mean, <coughs> I know that, that, excuse me, I have a chronic cough. <coughs> um, I know that you've sung with so many people background and you're not, I don't know how old you are, but you don't seem that old. But anyway, but now you're you're kind of uh, stretching into a more of a solo career, right? Yeah, it's about time, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, now that, that's a big subject, you know. Yeah. Because for many years, I don't know how many years have you been singing, like professionally. Uh, I'm going to say this is 2020. I'm going to say 32 or three. Yeah. Okay. Like where I was not, did, did not have a, you know, I was playing clubs and stuff when I was a teenager, but supporting <laughs> myself by making noise, as I like to say it. Yeah. Over 30 years. Okay. And I'm 57, by the way, and happy to be 57. All right. You know, you're right here, girl. Yeah. Really good, man. You're real. 10 years younger than me. I earned it. I earned it. And I'm loving my 50s. I'm, you know, when I was younger, I thought 30 was old, right? And then when I hit 30, I thought 40 was old. Now I'm 57. I think I'll say I'm old in my 70s, maybe. I know. It's hard. Even like somebody came on and they said, I'm 78. And I'm like, well, that's not really old, actually. Yeah. I don't think. I don't. Yeah. But anyway, so... You've been singing 30 years and and not really with a solo career and now all of a sudden you're 57 you're you decided yeah i think i'll have a solo career so let's just go right to that because 
<laughs> I think it's really important. And also, <coughs> excuse me. Also, um, I want you to tell the people about your website and I, I did copy and paste it, but your website and you can download a, your, uh, one of your cuts, right? Yes. Uh, my website is lamontvanhope.com, all lowercase. And if you go there, um, you can leave your in, uh, email address and download my new single, Something New, for free. Oh. Um, and I hope you'll help me with that. I'm building my email list so I can keep in touch with everybody. Um, yeah, Kathy, I, I moved to L.A. to be a solo artist. Um, from where? From uh, the Bay Area. I'm, I'm from Oakland, California, originally. Okay. And I've lived in the Bay Area. I lived in the Bay Area all my life until I went to uh, college. To Howard University, we got our uh, vice presidential, uh, vice president elect in the White House this time. So we're uh, hoping uh, things will go well and sending her lots of good love. Um, I came here to be a, a solo artist and then, I, and I, but I loved singing behind people and I kind of fell into that and loved it. And I still love it and I still plan on uh, doing backing vocals, but now, um, I think it's time to say what I have to say. And this record was kind of born out of me finally saying uh, I'm good enough. And I've been working with other people for long enough. Um, I started a couple of records before I did this one. I started a couple of R&B records. I started a gospel record. I started a jazz record and could never get the inspiration to finish and, and see it through. In a couple of years, I've been a country fan for probably probably 30 years as well. Um, but a couple of years ago, the idea just hit me, let's do a country record. It'll be something that is not expected from people that know me. Um, there's never been a time when Black people haven't been a part of country music, but it always hasn't looked that way. Uh, so I decided to do it, and I, I was excited from the jump, and I'm still excited. This record. Um, is a conglomeration of who I am. My sound is uh, country. It's a uh, little gospel, a little soul, maybe a little jazzy R&B thing in there, but still uh, honoring what country is. And then I want to take my audience uh, somewhere, but I'm really excited about this record and sharing this music. And I cannot wait to do some shows, Kathy. Please COVID <laughs> be over. Please COVID be over. <laughs> This is just like, it's, it's not torture. I'm just getting excited and excited. We're going to do some shows once we get the all clear, but I am, uh, I'm just glad to share what I finished. And I want to hear, I want to uh, people to hear it. And if you dig it, great. If you don't dig it, thank you for listening. But uh, the country world is changing. It's evolving. And uh, I want to be a bridge between the country audience and the R&B audience and the gospel audience and bluegrass audience. And let's, uh, Make some good music and have some fun. <laughs> Are they original material, uh, all the songs on the album? Right now, there are 11 songs, and nine of them are originals. I did two covers, uh, Wichita Lineman and Your Cheating Heart, which is like the beginning of our modern country, I guess. So I had to do those two songs. Uh, and the rest of them are originals that I wrote most of them in my backyard, swinging in my hammock having a cigar and maybe a cocktail or two. <laughs> yeah, just trying to uh, write a good country song. And I think, I think, yeah, I think we got some good stuff. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Well, I know we are, you have willingly said that we can, um, we can uh, <clears throat> play play your these three songs and wichita lineman is one please do yeah i can't wait to hear what you have done with this one <clears throat> here we go i am a lineman for the county and i drive the main road so Well, 
Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, real interesting that you really do hear the uh, cro the not crossover, but you hear the hear your different influences. You know, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. and that is my first ever uh, piano solo on a record. And this was the first this was the first tune we did for this record. But I've never recorded a piano solo. Usually uh, send it out to some of my friends to do that. <laughs> my record, I decided I'd just jump into the deep water and have some fun with it. And uh, really, really happy with uh, with the result. Cool. I noticed yeah. the guitar player too. Yes, absolutely. That's uh, Milo Deering uh, out of Dallas. He goes on the road with the Eagles. Okay. A mutual friend and he's doing on that tune. He's playing acoustic guitar and pedal steel. Yeah, it really jumped out. Uh, Gwendolyn Bolden said that was quite sexy. Hey, Gwen, we grew up in church together. That's my buddy. Very good. <laughs> also, Very good. Aaron Crawford sends his regards. Hey, how's everybody doing? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, yeah, Roland, here's a little Bill Withers, and yep. Yeah, I, I'm so I'm so sorry uh, he passed before. Uh, I got to work with him. I met him once. And I really, really, Kathy, I really wanted Glenn Campbell to hear this arrangement before he passed. And, and uh, that didn't happen either. But I'm hoping they're both listening now and uh, and enjoying the music. <laughs> uh, Lynn Fidmon said hi. Hey. That's my sweetie. That's my big sister. And she's guiding me through this part of my career like she did the last part, too. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's cool. Yeah. Well, you know, and I heard I heard that those tones that I was talking about, especially on the long notes, especially, you know, that's what I was talking about. Just and uh, your uh, your backgrounds are really nice. Boy, what you did on Catherine's new record is your backgrounds were so bomb. It was great. Just really beautiful. Thank you. I love her music. I love her music. I've been a, a fan. We met um, on a Rod Stewart gig many years ago in New York when she was living on the East Coast and uh, have remained friends and stayed in touch. And yeah, whenever she calls me and I'm available, it's, it's, it's another party. <laughs> yeah, she's she's deep. She's yeah, really good. Me, a yeah, serious really. composer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we worked on that this weekend, that, that cut, we added a bass, an acoustic bass, and it was really nice. And boy, just hearing you, <laughs> hearing you sing the backgrounds there, it was like, yeah, Lamont really made this cut, like, just so special. Yeah. Hey, that's good. I can't wait to hear the final mix. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, so, um, <clears throat> I, I, I know people who have done background background singing, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's such a uh, it's kind of like a commitment, and I I I like to find out a little bit more about that, like because I'm sure you go through a lot of different uh, perspectives and emotions being a background singer. You know, mm -hmm. there's good people to work for, there's bad people. You must at some point go, do I want to do this anymore? Uh, and then other times you must feel like, damn, I want to do this every single night. And so there's, there's, uh, I'm sure there's so much to it. Um, so I'd like to kind of uh, pull out from you what some of your feelings were along the way, like as you started and as you continued and, you know, just kind of give us a, as I said before, we can look at and ask, quite, ask uh, stories about different people, but I'd rather hear your point of view first, you know? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think, I think uh, background singing is a very specialized skill set. Yeah. Uh, because in order to do it well, you really have to listen to what the other singers are doing um, and uh, find the same vowel spacings, find the same entrances and exits and cutoffs and uh, places to breathe or sneak a breath is when you're doing it in conjunction in concert with other singers, you're a section, right? Yeah. And the, the great singers realize that the um, not so great singers can sing the pitches, but um, the nuances aren't always there. So when, uh, when all that is in play, when you got uh, singers that have done their homework and show up to the session, uh, if the producers send out the music or the charts ahead of time, the, You've uh, really spent some time with it to learn it. Uh, it's magic, Kathy. You know, when it's right, it's just good. And you could be there all day and all night. And when it's bad, you want the uh, world to stop so you can go home. <laughs> <laughs> but more times than not, it's, uh, it's great. And it's been, you know, through my career, I've gotten to work with... Uh, the singers my age and younger, but the older singers, and I say older with a whole lot of respect, uh, but the older singers that have been here laying it down and holding it down for years and years and years. And uh, been so fortunate to work with some of those people and been welcomed and uh, and tutored uh, and mentored by them as well. So I'm, you know, lucky little black boy from Oakland, that's what I like to say, just very blessed and grateful. grateful. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah um I, I laugh at that because i i call myself you know the poor jewish girl from boston you know <laughs> hey. hey we're still here we, we still are right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um how much uh improvisation comes up when you're doing these gigs i mean i'm sure it's different with everybody but are there some some people, you know, such as Phil Collins or some somebody who knows their music so well that they're, I mean, the form I'm sure is supported by the band, but mm -hmm. there must be moments of well, I, I feel like stretching more, 
and then the background singers i i've you know i have done a little bit of background singing and i know that feeling you're all together and somehow magically you just all will go somewhere together and you know it's fine and it works and and it's really a good feeling but yeah. um, how much improvisation do you actually come across in those kind of situations <clears throat> it depends on the artist you know some artists uh once you're done rehearsing they want the show exactly like rehearsals every night uh, there's some artists that uh, once we're done rehearsing, now we have the roadmap, and then they want you to take it to another place every now and then. And it's it's kind of a, a most times it's kind of a happy medium between the two. Yeah. Uh, then there are the surprises where you're on stage and cooking, and the house is great, and it feels great on stage, and the artist will turn to you and say, "Hey, come get some." And you know, unexpected, and you do what you do, and just put your uh, logs on the fire, as we say, and and say what you have to say, say your business, uh, and that's you know that's fun too. Sometimes it's a little uh, shocking. I tell you, uh, first time uh, Diana Ross invited me to sing uh, the Endless Love duet with her, I was she turned around and said, "Lamont, you want to sing Endless Love with me?" And she had been doing it by herself, right? And I heard it, but I wasn't sure what I heard. <laughs> and so uh, I didn't answer. And she turned around and looked at me and I was pointing like this, me. She said, yeah, come sing with me. <laughs> and I'm walking downstairs to join her and thinking, I am about to stay. Endless love <laughs> with the Diana Ross. And I say the Diana Ross because there's a lot of beautiful impersonators that come to these shows and some of them are fabulous. <laughs> but me, Diana Ross, just invited me to sing this iconic song with her, which I'm going to do and immediately after go call my mother. <laughs> you know, I still have those moments, Kathy, which I'm grateful for. <laughs> um, you know, with different people. Mavis was one. Just when she walked in the room, I was like, oh, my God, it's really her. <laughs> you know, all of that great music. Um, yeah, cool. yeah, but I'm still a fan. I, I, I'm, I might have to go look at some of these videos. One of the videos, um, I was talking to Paulette McWilliams. You probably know her. <laughs> she, we played a video of her. Can't remember who it was she was singing with. It was somebody like very sexy and wonderful, a guy. And uh -huh. she was just, <laughs> she said, I was just like, I was flipping out, you know, while I was singing with him. I was like, oh my God, this is yeah. like. <laughs> on the inside, because you're trying to be cool, right? On the outside, you're trying to like, I do this all the time. I got this. But on the inside, it's like, wait till I call my mother. <laughs> Here's some. Um, here, uh, well, we could watch um, you singing. Well, this is kind of cool right here. This one, this 54th uh annual i i wasn't sure if uh if this was lamont because he has hair quite it's, How about that? a few years ago right yeah a few years ago we did this is the uh pre-telecast for the grammys you know how they say uh kathy siegel garcia won a grammy earlier this evening uh before the broadcast started this is the ceremony that's uh before the telecast okay. right next year so we open the show. Welcome to the Grammys, everybody. I said, welcome to the Grammys, everybody.
exciting. That was fun. I have to say that was fun. Pretty exciting. I know I knew about half of those musicians there. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Wasn't that um drummer, the guy in uh the yellow jackets? Yeah, Will Kennedy. Yeah, yeah Will Kennedy. Oh, he's so mm -hmm. good. So good. Everybody on that stage, uh Larry Batiste and uh Clay Tobin Richardson put that band together and you know, just great band, Ron King great. and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask, I mean, obviously the band, the better the band, the more fun, but um, mm -hmm. do you, are there, are there these moments of remembering like how good the band was behind you and like what, it, you know, that just pushed you to the limit? Absolutely. And sometimes it pops up in the strangest places. Really? Um, Good. You know, uh, kind of obvious, but no less important, you know, a band like the Phil Collins band with the A-list players from around the planet. Yeah. You know, the first rehearsal, we're running tunes. The first rehearsal, because everybody does their homework. Yeah. Then there's, uh, you know, some, some bands that in church, you know, the musicianship has grown so much in church and every now and then you can walk into church and they are laying it down like the pros, you know, in, in, in LA, a lot of uh, professional musicians play in their churches, but it's always a pleasure to uh, work with musicians that get it. And one of my big things, Kathy, tell me what you think about this. If there is singing going on, if, if, the, if the act is a singer, this is a singing group with a band, if there is some singing going on, everything else is accompaniment. And if you're not, if you can't hear the lead singer, whatever you're doing, you're playing too loud. Yeah. You know, we don't have a switch or a switch or a knob on our backs where we can just increase the volume. Uh, you know, yeah, I could blow my voice out by the second song if I can't hear myself, if I have to push too hard. But the enjoyable gigs are where, uh, Nobody has anything to prove. We're all here with the common goal to do a great show and make some people happy. And that's when you can have fun, you know, never want to get to the end. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to get up there with you and sing. <laughs> I, will, I hope we get to do it. I hope we get to do it. Once we get the all clear, I think we're all going to be very busy. But until then, I'm happy doing vocals at home. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just, oh my gosh, to get back to something like that, where there's thousands, I mean, that that was not thousands of people, but like the one with Phil Collins, which we'll watch a little bit later, that's yeah. like thousands of people, right? Yeah. The audience yeah. is right next to each other. and Yeah, you know, I miss that, but it's not time for that now. I really do believe we'll get back to it uh, yeah. because that's part of the thrill. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a conglomerate on stage and a conglomerate in the house and you feed off of each other. You really do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if we have to go back to live shows and people are distanced, uh, I'm sure I'll get used to that. Yeah. But there's something about seeing people right next to each other and seeing people that don't know each other, meet each other at the gig. You can see it from stage. Yeah. And they meet each other at the gig and just decide, since we're sitting or preferably standing next to each other, let's have a good time together. And let's, um, you know, leave whatever we left at home, let's leave it for a couple of hours and just have a good time and uh, sing these songs and, and meet some new people and have some fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope we get to, I can't wait to do something. <laughs> what do you think the, do you think that's, <coughs> do you think that's, um, a big part of what we as artists, uh, what what our thing is, what our responsibility is. Do you, do you think there's more to it, or, um, you know, what do you, what do you feel like your your job as an artist is? I think it's twofold because if I don't feel it, I can't expect for you to feel it. Yeah. So you know, when I'm on stage, um, I'm in the moment, in this song, in this story so that I can bring you with me. Um, if it's an up song where I want to shake my booty and talk about that, we, you know, I want to communicate that to uh, get you out of your seat as well. If I want to talk about uh, 
the person that broke my heart, I got a song on this uh, record called Bitter. And uh, it says, uh, I hope uh, in the chorus, one of the lines is, I hope everything in your world falls apart because I'm <laughs> mad and bitter. <laughs> um, you know, I want to communicate that feeling too. I think that's my job to make you feel something. Whatever it is I'm trying to communicate to make you feel it, to make you laugh sometimes. Uh, you know, something to maybe bring a tear to your eye, make you reflect. Uh, that's the job. I think if your mindset is in the right place, uh, you get, I get something as the uh, our artist as well, for sure, for certain. And, uh, but I definitely feed off of the audience and uh, encourage them. You know, I don't like a quiet show. I need, I grew up in church. I need to hear, you know, if, I, if I'm doing something to make your backbone slip, I need you to say so. Uh, <laughs> That doesn't bother me. Some artists like it quiet when they perform. I, I'm used to this call and response, this interactive thing, which is uh, a way, maybe my favorite gig, Kathy, and I don't think there are any clips that you have, or I gotta find some and put them on my website. My favorite gig, I believe, and I might get in trouble for saying this, <laughs> I was with the vocal and percussion band called the Cultural Heritage Choir. Uh, Linda Tillery, Cultural Heritage Choir. We traveled all around the world, uh, five ladies and myself. And wow. one of the ladies sang the bottom and I sang the top uh, a lot of the time. Uh, just vocals and percussion. We did slave songs and pop songs and wow. children play songs. And they were actually nominated for a Grammy before I joined the group. But I'm telling you, we would sit in a semicircle with sticks and bells and voices and just have a great time uh, every night. Wow. Um, you know, and then you contrast that with audience, like audiences uh, like Phil Collins and, and Rod Stewart. We were in the Guinness Book of World Records for a minute with Rod Stewart for a million people at one show in Rio de Janeiro, maybe 1919 something, 1998 or 99, maybe back then. Wow. And I think uh, <clears throat> this last tour with Phil, I think we were in one venue with 80 or 90,000 people. So it's, uh, and you can still get what you get in the stadium. You can still get that feedback uh, in an arena or in a smaller theater if, uh, if the audience wants to come with you. You know, and I've seen uh, outdoor shows. I've been on outdoor shows where it's raining or even trying to snow a little bit. And the audience is like, we don't care. We are not leaving, <laughs> you know? And then you just have to give it up and, and, and go in 110% uh, now. Yeah. Uh, because the audience is ready. And that's, that's a big reason why we do what we do, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I found a little bit of them. Um, I'm not sure if any of these are with you, but, um, I just thought it would be interesting to play one of these, just a little, get a little hit of what they are like. Oh man, these, they, they throw down I'm trying to tell you something, you'll love it. Just, um, I mean, I'll just pick this one. Okay. The little things in life are easy to take for granted. And like getting away from the kids for a But the skip the ad. This This train, this train, this train is bound for glory. This train, this train is bound for glory. This train, this train is bound for glory. If you run, you must be holy. This train is bound for glory. This train, this train don't care no liars. This train, this train don't care no liars. This train, this train don't care no lies, no hypocrites, no midnight riders. This train don't care no liars. This train, this train don't care no gamblers. This train. This train don't care no gamblers. This train, this train don't care no gamblers, no hypocrites, no midnight ramblers. This train don't care no gamblers. This train, little baby, play on your harp. Hallelujah, hallelujah, little baby, 
play on your harp, hallelujah. Little baby, play, play on, on your harp, mm -hmm. hallelujah, hallelujah. Little David, play on your harp, hallelujah. Little David was a shepherd boy. He killed Goliath. And he shout for joy, little David, play on your harp. Hallelujah, hallelujah, little David, play on your harp. Hallelujah, little David, play on, play on your harp. Yeah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. David, play on your harp. All right. Hallelujah. Really Sweet honey in the rockish, yeah? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, um, this this personnel that was Linda there playing the djembe and the purple blouse, but the rest of the personnel has changed since I uh, left the group. But the the vibe and the uh, the compilation of songs, all kind of songs. It was just that gig was a gig for the soul. It was not a gig for the money. It was a gig for the soul. Yeah, and it was so it was so much fun. I, I that's one I'm, I I have enjoyed the most. I would have to say one of them. Isn't that yeah. cool? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I wanted to ask you this. I mean, I know what I've experienced myself singing, but um, you sung in, with so many different audiences, uh, like thousands and thousands of people listening or, you know, maybe a few hundred or even less. Um, when you sing it, and it's your it's your time to step forward and sing, do you do you find that you basically are singing? not for yourself but singing f like in your own space and allowing the audience to just share in that or are you trying to sell it to the audience or is there a mixture i would say it's probably a mixture you know you're there you're on stage to entertain uh but i you know i'm not one that can keep still on stage it's really hard for me and some gigs you know, call for you to just kind of be kind of stoic and and let your mouth sing these pitches and that's all. It's really hard for me. I move. So I think um, the first part of it is me having my fun, having my fun. And I, I like to say, you know, on the spiritual side, that's my praise, Kathy. I am so grateful to do what I get to do um, and live by. That's how I eat. I say I eat by making noise. Um, it's my joy on stage. And I want to communicate that. Um, not trying to sell it just for selling its sake. Uh, but I'm having a good time and I want you to have a good time with me. Let's play. That's cool. Now you, um, again, I'm going to share the screen just because there's, there's so many, um, you know, that you've sung with here. I mean, Wow, you know, all of these people I've listened to all my life, mm -hmm. uh, well, almost all of them, I, um, you know, Quincy Jones, I know you have something online that we could watch with that, James Taylor, mm -hmm. another heart, heart thing, uh, yeah, Annie true. Lennox, mm -hmm. one of my favorites, you know, and Indeed. I'm sure a lot of people, Winona and Clint black and pam tillis and uh Patty Austin and george duke that no that was probably more of a was that more of a solo thing that you did with george duke no i was i was i toured with him for like six or seven years before he passed i was part of his last band before he passed away a few years back um <laughs> And he was another artist that I worked with that was just so generous. We toured and I did uh, his last two or three records as well. Um, just generous with their stage when they don't have to be. Um, and giving you a chance to do some improv and, and play with the audience a little bit, you know? Um, I wish he was still here to write me a country song. I miss, I miss George quite a bit. Uh, but my country thing, my country thing, uh, Kathy, I've gotten to work with some country artists. I worked with uh, Blake Shelton. I think he was on his first single, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, he was out here in LA to do some TV and I got called to do the gig. And I'm waiting backstage in the green room and he walks in. He says, I want to give you a, a, 
copy of my single so you can learn it. I was like, dude, I already know your song. <laughs> He's like, really? You know, looking at me like, you know, black man, country, I don't know, how would you know my song? And I was like, look, you see my, you see my boots I have on, right? He's like, those are really? Those are really? <laughs> so we went and did the sound check and he knew I uh, figured out, I knew, saw that I knew the song and uh, came back afterwards and thanked me and, and was a really cool guy and said, uh, I, would you like a copy of my CD? I said, I would love a copy of your CD if you will sign it for me, which he did. And I still have. Uh, and he's huge now, right? Uh, I did a TV show with Clint Black. Yeah. TV with Winona. Man, I want to do a duet with her. She was so damn cool. Just regular. Just regular. And, you know, again, when you meet people um, that you admire and they're actually nice, it's just uh, very refreshing, which is what I find with most of the A-list players, I call them, or A-list singers. They're wonderful people. Um, some of the pretenders, I'll call them, and not being so nice, they are not nice people because they're insecure, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, which we all are as artists to a degree. But um, in my experience, the master players are just great people because they have yeah, nothing to prove. They're grateful to be doing what they're doing as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, de it's definitely a spiritual perspective, you know, yeah. re regardless of how much faith you have. It's really not about that. Yeah. Yeah. It shouldn't be anyway. It should, it should be. It's an interaction. Music is a very spiritual thing. Uh, regardless of the genre, you know, some of the heavier forms of music, which I'm not really uh, into, um, they make you feel something too. I was in Milan uh, visiting a friend and he took me to see a band called Pantera. Are you hip to them? I, I don't know. The name sounds familiar. I don't know. I want to say heavy metal or something like that. He just wanted me to go to a concert with, to see some of the music he loved. And I went. And, it, you know, everybody was, most people were dressed in black. It was in an arena and they were head banging through. And I was just in awe <laughs> watching everybody in concert head banging together. They were, they were in it and they were having their kind of great time. And that's what I enjoyed. Um, <laughs> the music, you know, if I tried to sing like those guys, yeah, yeah, my voice would be shot in like five minutes. Yeah. That's not my gift. But, uh, you know, I can respect uh, other people doing their thing. And I like, I like seeing people have a good time. Yeah. You know. uh, Roland wants to know, what did, what did you do with Dave Brubeck? We did uh, one of the honors of my life. Check this out. We did the uh, Monterey Jazz Festival. <clears throat> uh, Lynn Fidmont, Fred White, and myself. And we were, it was the 50th anniversary of this jazz opera that uh, Dave Brubeck and his wife had penned, had composed. Oh. And the original lineup included Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, Dave Brubeck, of course. And this group of singers that I cannot remember their name, but the three of us, me and Lynn and Fred, we're standing in for these singers. Liz Wright stood in for uh, Ella Fitzgerald before her first record came out. Oh boy. And uh, I can't remember the brilliant brother that did uh, Satchmo, but we did the Monterey Jazz Festival and Clint Eastwood uh, introduced the band. And then as we were walking off stage, he came to me, oh, I want to shake your hand. I was like, what? <laughs> you are Dirty Harry. I want to shake your hand. <laughs> Because you know, he loves jazz, I'm told. And, and oh yeah, totally. But it was it was <laughs> magical being on that stage and being on that stage at Monterey Jazz with Dave Brubeck singing uh singing those iconic harmonies and, and some great songs. Wow, cool. That's really great. Very yeah, cool. It was very uh, cool. Yeah. That's really big, big on that. Sorry, I just have to adjust my blinds, but okay. yeah, we had a great uh Great time, and uh, thankfully, he and his wife uh, kept in touch before he passed. I'm not sure if his wife is still living, and their son, Chris, is still, I think he's a trombone player. Just really beautiful family, and, you know, what a musical legacy, right? Ruben. Totally. totally. When yeah. I first came to L.A., I was a waitress at the jazz club, Dante's, and Clint Eastwood always hung out there. 
And um, uh, there was a place, the um, uh, the Money Tree, which still exists, but it's a kind of a different venue now. But um, we, you know, we we as singers would have those were the days we had a week, a whole week that we were singing at this place. Then another singer, right? And Clint mm -hmm. always used to hang out there too. Um, <laughs> and I just remember the first time I met him, I was a waitress at Dante's. And I was doing whatever I was doing at the bar and I looked up and there was and there Clint is. looking over me and I had never really thought about Clint Eastwood much. Yeah. My, my knees actually went weak. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Yeah. And tall, like really beautiful vibe, you know, mm -hmm. great smile. Yeah. 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 I can see that. And he has a place yeah. in Monterey, you know, he has a hotel and a restaurant and lounge. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I've sung there before too. And uh, yeah, he's he's Clint Eastwood, man. He's pretty Clint cool. Eastwood. Sorry. Or as the kids say now, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yep. Roland's also impressed with Gino Vanelli. Another icon, man. Gino Vanelli told me he likes the way I sing, Kathy. That's just. <laughs> We hadn't started rehearsals yet. He asked me to send him an MP3 of something I had done, and I did. And uh, he hit me back to give me the information about the gig. But the first thing he said was, I really like the way you sing. That is like, uh, you know, like Michael Ray used to say, I can go to heaven. Yeah. I'm, I'm, um, one of the things I want from this record is to make my colleagues proud, Kathy. I've been my life has been poured into by so many of the people that I've worked with um, here in LA and around the world. And, and the work ethic, um, the legacy of respect for the music, um, I want to bring that all into play and, uh, and make my colleagues know that I was paying attention. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, I also see one of my queens, Chaka Khan. Come on now. I mean, if I got to sing with Chaka Khan, I probably would die and go to heaven. I was in heaven. I remember the gig I did with her was a private show. Mm. This is funny. And she laid it down, right? Like she always does. Yeah. And when she came off stage, I got off stage first. And I was sitting with the lady from uh, from the record company, and Shaka was sitting next to her. And the lady's name was Joan something. She used to work Broadway records. Anyway, she was there with Shaka. She said, girl, you sang that song. And Shaka looked at her and said, well, you know, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I never forgotten that. And, and Shaka was sitting one person away from me, so I was kind of... Uh, eavesdropping on that conversation but i leaned in and said you got that right girl that is what you do yeah. <laughs> she will sing on you she will sing till she feels better about the situation yes and she's you know icon she's been holding it down since the 70s man i know yeah, yeah i'm just so yeah, yeah. grateful yeah yeah um, let's see I, i'd like to look at that one with quincy Mm -hmm. That was a really, that seemed like a real cool one. Here we go. I'm uh, really digging that uh, right now because Georgia went blue. Thank you, Georgia. We're going to get some relief soon. But this is uh, Georgia on my mind. We were in Atlanta, Georgia for a um, Quincy Jones show. And the contractor for the show, Joanne Tominaga, asked me to sing Georgia on my mind to rehearse the band and just get them through the chart. Unbeknownst to me, Quincy was in the building. <laughs> but I, I sang, the, sang down the chart and we might have done it twice. And then we're on a little break and Quincy walks on stage and I see him and, you know, I've worked with him before, but, you know, Quincy Jones walks in the room and you're just in awe, right? Oh, you sure? So, I, I see him walking on stage and then I see him. He looks like he's walking over here to the singers. And then he looks like he's walking over to me. <laughs> and so 
you know, I'm trying to keep my cool facade on, but I'm like, it's, it's, he's coming over here. Oh my goodness, he's coming up. Okay, did he hate it or what's wrong, right? Because we always hate it. Right? And he was like, oh man, you did uh, great on that song. He said, I want you to open the uh, finale tonight. This song, George, on my mind was the finale with James Ingram and uh, Patty Austin and Saida Garrett and so many other great singers on that stage. Um, and he came over again, he said, I want you to open the finale tonight. And I'm like, okay. And I turned to Lynn Fitman, who was on the gig. I said, um, I bought some uh, background singing clothes, but now I need to go shopping and find some lead singing clothes. <laughs> that I bought from LA just for not good. <laughs> and uh, it was just uh, a magical time. So we get to, we get to the intro is playing the, during this taping. And the teleprompter says for Patty to sing the first verse. And as the intro is playing, I'm being as discreet as I can. I ease over to Patty and I said, uh, Patty, the teleprompter says it's time for you to sing, but Quincy told me to sing the first verse. And she, and this is all happening while the intro was going on now. And she said, Quincy's there for you to sing the first verse. I said, yeah, but I don't want to step on your toe. She said, you sing the first verse. And that's when it started. <laughs> okay. That's like right on stage right now. <laughs> Wow, well, just the two of you singing that first is like fantastic, gorgeous. I'm just grinning, reliving that moment. It was so much fun. Oh, God. It was fun. Yeah. Who is that, uh, that girl who was just singing? Her name is Nikki Yablonski, I believe is her name. Uh, young girl with a big voice. Big voice. She was singing. This, yeah. yeah, lots of. I think uh, members of Pentatonix were on stage that night. Yeah. Um, and Patty and James Ingram and uh, Saida Garrett. And the young man, I'm trying to think, I love his voice as well with the blonde beard. I can't remember his name. That's, it's been a few years, Kathy. That's okay. <laughs> did, you, did you work with Quincy uh, more often? 
I've done a couple of things with him, you know, three or four different shows uh, around the world, just one-offs. I yeah. would love to do a tour with Quincy Jones. Um, yeah, but he's always been iconic and regular. Uh, you know, yeah, very supportive. After that show, um, I was leaving stage and they had a, a chair set up for Quincy in the wings and I was walking past him and uh, just thanking him for inviting me to the party. And uh, Quincy Jones got his card out of his pocket and gave me his personal phone number that I still haven't used because I've been advised, don't use this number unless you have a reason. But this is the number that he actually answers. Hopefully it hasn't changed because now <laughs> the record I wanted to hear. Uh, but you know, every time I met him, he's been really supportive and just regular, just nice, just nice. Yeah. 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 We, um, I have some friends who I interviewed a few weeks ago, uh, Barbara Bentry and John Rangel mm -hmm. from Arizona. He's a pianist and she's a singer and a filmmaker. And for the last four years, they made a, uh, a documentary on, um, on <coughs> Dave Grusin. Uh -huh. <laughs> an incredible documentary and Quincy had a big part in it, you know, and they, they spent a lot of time with him over the four years. Okay. It was really, yeah, it was just good. I mean, Dave Grusin is such a genius too. And he's absolutely, okay. You know, look for. He had so much um, to talk. There was so much to talk about with him, you know, and he had so many different relationships that were quality. You know? mm -hmm. So yeah, it was really nice. Absolutely, another icon. Yeah. 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 It's interesting for me to talk to you and and folks who like you who have worked with people that I will never ever work with, and and yet uh, those people have been like like most people, they've been close to me because I grew up listening to them, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, and just to uh, have this kind of idea of a balance, you know, of <clears throat> how how you live when you're involved in that kind of action and how, how you don't, how you live when you're not involved in that kind of action, you know, and <clears throat> um, it's, it's, uh, it's all good. It's all, um, it, it, there's so, like everything, there's so much about it that teaches people about living, you know, and what it is and what you do and what somebody else does and how it all helps. Everybody helps each other, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's certainly been my experience doing this record, Kathy. Um, I, I'm working on the liner notes uh, for this record whenever I get to release the whole record. I had planned to do that and then COVID hit and I decided to just release singles because the team is not quite in place yet. I was headed to Nashville to take some meetings and COVID hit and everything just kind of stopped. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> I'm working on the liner notes for this record and one of the things I've written so far is that I, I, I asked my friends to help me make this record. And they all said yes. <laughs> and that is the truth. Um, old friends that I worked with before, new friends, we did uh, part of the record in uh, Nashville. Uh, Brad Cole, who plays keys in Phil's band, Phil Common's band, uh, co-produced four songs with me uh, that we recorded at his studio in Nashville with uh, some players that I had met before. And when I tell you that these guys came in the studio and uh, played for me like I was Garth Brooks or somebody, I mean, they really laid it down for me. I am just eternally grateful. Uh, players and singers in Nashville um, helped me and players and singers here in LA and around the country. Um, I've sent out tracks to and, and just, I've been uh, very, uh, the same word keeps coming up, Kathy, grateful uh, for my station in life right now and for what is happening and what's about to happen. Uh, this country thing is, is real for me. The uh, single is called Something New and that's alive for me. The song is called Something New 
My new career path is something new. My, my country sound is something new. Um, and I just, I can't wait to share. I'm happy to share the single. I can't wait to share the rest of the music. Uh, we worked really hard and uh, I got some good stuff that's gonna make you introspective. I got some stuff that's gonna make you laugh, I hope. Uh, I got some stuff that's gonna make you move. And, uh, and yeah, when we get to do some shows, we're really, I got some stuff planned for live, so we're really gonna have a good time. That's gonna be so good for you to get, get it going live, you know? Yes. I mean, that's yeah. gonna be so, amazing because that's of course when we when we really uh have the best time with it you know we we get into it we work it and then it becomes ours and then we get loose with it and yeah it's yeah. really <clears throat> that's really now i want to hear bible bottle is that bible bottle gun okay this is another song that I wrote in my backyard in the hammock. I remember the hook came like, you know, you're writing a song and some song, I just finished the song that I worked on for maybe four months. The lyric would not come. It just wouldn't. Or I would get a line and then get another line in three weeks. Just finished <laughs> a song like that. This song, Bible Bottle Gun, the, the hook just came. Bam, here you go. Um, <laughs> it's a drinking song. It's a prayer. It's about uh, people to get on your nerves and you <laughs> want to keep your Christian spirit together, uh, but they are on your nerves. So you just might have to uh, Smack handle the situation. <laughs> it's, 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 it's tongue in cheek, but that's what this song is about. Okay, cool. By the way, Valerie Pinkston said she's very excited about the project. <laughs> uh, fabulous singer and fabulous photographer. Oh. oh my goodness, we took we taken some good pictures where I'm actually wearing my cowboy hat, y'all. You better get ready. Oh hey Val. We're gonna get ready for that. Yes, okay. indeed. Here's here it is. All right. I love Jesus, but I ain't no punk. Catch me at the wrong time, it'll cost you a hell of a day. <laughs> That's why I'm here praying. Oh, Lord, I want to be ready. But sometimes I need a real stiff drink. Right now, until the sun's dead. I just might shoot them before they can play. Father, <laughs> Right now, it's your 
That's cool. Yay. Wow. That was fun. That was a cool song. That's a fun, it was a fun song to record too. Yeah. We did the track in Nashville and then we did all the vocals here in LA. That smoked. In my little uh, boom boom room here, that my noisy room here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we had a good time. Yeah, that is a good hook. Thank you. That it, it just came, you know, you know, you you wish every song would come like that. Yeah. It just came. It just came. Yeah. And then I had to work on the verses and the bridge, but the hook came like instantly. That's great. I like yeah. it. Um, do you have a Facebook page, Lamont? I, I do. Um, if you go to my website, lamontfanhook.com, all the links for uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are there. Okay. And I'm considering TikTok. Are you on TikTok, Kathy? I'm not really on TikTok. Nope. Yeah, I'm considering that because I just want I want to be in touch with people because that's the way we do things now. Uh, but yeah, please go to my website, LamontVanHook.com and leave me your email address and download my single for free. And the next single I'm, I am uh, uh, contemplating uh, releasing a new single after Christmas. You know, we got to get a video and stuff done for it, but uh, lots of more music uh, coming and lots of shows, right? Lots of shows, lots of shows. We're going on the road, yeah. Do you, do you work on your business? Are you a business person? I am, I'm a detail person. So that's very much business. I'm, I'm in the minutia of details. I, it like makes me happy. Yeah. It makes me happy, yeah, yeah, organizing, uh, yeah. And we all have to be right, especially now, especially now. Yeah. You know, um, I've done this year, I think last week I did my third session where I had to go to a studio this year. Yeah. Which is, you know, far less than normal. And it is, you know, it's November. Um, the last couple of months I've been working a lot remotely here at home. Um, but even that is not to the level that it normally is. So, you know, yeah, you gotta, you know, figure out how to keep all your ducks in a row, uh, keep eating when you get ready and sleeping indoors, right? Uh, I am, uh, yeah, so you, you know, you learn how to buzz it in Corona. It's just, you know, it's, it is what it is. We're all doing the best we can. I'm grateful for the work that is coming in and yeah. Yeah, can't wait to get back on the road. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, I, <clears throat> I'm really good at work and de and details. Mm -hmm. and like for instance, I did I released one single. Now I'm releasing another, and r remembering what the steps that I did around the first single, you know, I have written some down, but I apparently didn't write everything down. Yeah, and it's really, I mean, last night I. I was amazed that I was even uh, like alive because <laughs> I was, my attention was like this, you know, it was, yeah. each finger was a different thing. And I was, you know, doing different things. I was uploading and I was, um, you know, it, the Spotify thing is very, the Spotify thing is very vague to me. You know, it's, I mean, there's, uh, there's direction, you know, mm -hmm. for Spotify, but it still seems it still seems intangible. It still seems like now how do I how do I upload my single on Spotify again? I think yeah. I do it through CD Baby or you know one of those distributions. I don't think I can upload it myself, but I I forget from from time to time. I'm really good when I do it, but then you know it's 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 a lot to think about. 
it's a lot the days um where a singer could just sing yeah i think that's over yeah and and there are good parts and bad parts you know i don't mind uh kicking in uh you know learning some other things on uh social media or learning how to edit video or or yeah. but that's not you know that's not normally my thing but i have had to learn how to do a lot um some of it is fun some of it is not uh but yeah i think the days when we could just stand in front of a microphone and sing that's over yeah. you gotta really engage with your audience through social media or somehow and, and uh you know, now when work comes in remote, remotely, I'm not only the background singer, I'm the engineer as well. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. you, you know, you got to, you got to, you have to evolve along with the times, I guess. And, and we're all hoping that uh, COVID will leave us very soon. We'll get back to some degree of normalcy and familiarity, but uh, some things are going to stay with us. Some of our new habits are going to stay with us. And I'm interested to see exactly what those will be. Do you think that have you uh, have you produced in the studio? Do you think that that might be maybe something that you would do? I uh, co-produced my record, yeah. and I had the great pleasure. I'm so glad you brought this up. I had the great pleasure. We were on the road with Phil Phil Collins, and the uh, the uh, backing singer sex was myself, Anna McCullough, Bridget Bryan, and Amy Keys. Right, great world class mm -hmm. yeah. singer. Yeah, and we, the blend was always great, but you know these people are notorious for laughing <laughs> at the inappropriate moment, right? <laughs> me included. Me, I mean, we had a seriously wonderful time um, all the time. But I had the great while we were on the road. Phil would introduce Arnold every night as the Reverend for some reason, which I still really don't know. And after Phil introduced Arnold as the reverend, Arnold would break out into this very unreverend like gyration dance. <laughs> and uh, anyway, one night I told Arnold, I said that the idea, I have an idea to write a song for you called The Reverend. <laughs> and uh, and I'm, I'm working on it. And that song took probably three or four months to finish went through a couple of iterations and the lyric finally came away at Mason. And I produced the song, uh, The Reverend on Arnold, and we're not sure when it's gonna be released. Uh, but wow. It is uh, a really cool thing. And Arnold was really uh, valuable, letting me, letting me sit in the producer chair. Yeah. And he uh, taught me about producing singers because he had to tell me, you, you know, you wrote the song for me to sing and now you want to tell me how to sing it. And that's not what you do with the singer. And I was like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> Sing the song. I, I can guide you with, you know, the, the melody in this particular section that I'm actually married to, but I really do want you to take the song and sing it like you would sing it. And uh, I'm just so, I can't wait for people to hear that as well. So yes, I am a record producer as well. How about that? I love that. I love how mm. he sings. I heard right, him too. sing live at, um, Vitello's a few mm -hmm. years ago and it was really beautiful I mean he's just mm -hmm. such a he's really a great musician mm -hmm. great pure tone yeah, yeah. and, and crazy there's three yeah. syllables crazy <laughs> yeah great time. I like producing because it really teaches me may and maybe it's partly because I'm a woman but I it makes me um learn about stating my mind you know, mm -hmm. because I do know a lot. I do know a lot. And mm -hmm. so, um, and I'm a good teacher. So in the studio, it's as you said, you want the singer to sing how they sing, but you also, you can recognize as an experienced professional, you can recognize when they're not really delivering their best mm -hmm. and when they are. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's really the beauty and fun of being a producer when you actually yeah. That is good. That's it. Do yeah, it. we got it. Yeah, or don't or do that again. You got to do that yeah. again. Um, and I've been having a lot of. Uh, I've really enjoyed producing, co-producing uh, Catherine in the studio, good. and that's what I do with her because she is definitely her own unique self, and she yeah. knows the 
she's doing and she knows what she wants. She knows when she sounds the best. Mm -hmm. And um, I just like to, you know, steer her or agree with her or maybe push her to do it again or whatever. But it's a, uh, it's interesting to trust yourself in the studio to do that, you know, and, and because as soon as you say some, to somebody, gee, I'm really sorry, but I, I think I feel like you should be doing, <laughs> as soon as you go down that road, yes. it doesn't work. You know, exactly. It's really not exactly. If you're in a producer's chair, you got to drive the train. Yeah. And, uh, and, and a good producer will recognize a different, every artist is different. So, you yeah. know, the way you would communicate with me in the studio might not be the way you would communicate with Catherine in the studio. And a yeah. good producer will uh, hone in on the artists that they're working with and, you know, first of all, make them comfortable so they can be vulnerable and take some vocal chances, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, try to find something that maybe they haven't tried before. Yeah. Um, and make this song really live. Yeah. Um, I also remember like being a teacher, having, there was this one producer who would send me people that he was producing. Um, and several times he would send me these kind of uh, more amateur singers with good voices, but like he would be, for instance, this one guy, he was trying to get an R&B thing out of him. And the guy was not an R&B singer, there but he go. sang really well, but not mm -hmm. R&B. Yeah. And it really rubbed me wrong. You know, I just yeah. really didn't want to try and force this guy into singing R&B. It wasn't yeah. what he should have been doing. Exactly. You know? So exactly. yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. It's kind of like you like good music, like you went to the, the head bashing concert, you know, good music is good music. It doesn't really matter if it's a genre you don't normally listen to. I had a singer who was a heavy metal um, guy. This student was interesting. He uh, did, he carried equipment and stuff for Billy Sheehan. Okay. He was a bass player mm -hmm. and he came to me and he really, he couldn't match a note. Okay. He had four notes to his range, but he wrote great songs. Okay. Like really, and it was not my style, but I really mm. liked the songs. So every month I would give him a lesson and he would go home. And then when he would come back, he would play the last lesson and, and sing what he had been working on. And then we would do the next lesson. And mm -hmm. every month in a year, he was like my best student because you know oh and he he was so cute i said you know he was doing a gig i said uh, well could you hear yourself singing and he said no <laughs> like okay. no am i supposed to and yeah I, we're gonna work on that part yeah like, well, lot, you ha you have to have a monitor so you can yeah, hear yourself so you can hear. oh yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. so cute <laughs> yeah. Not that we all haven't been on stage when the monitors go out and you just got to keep going. Yes. But you should, you should start with the monitor for sure. Yes. You have <laughs> to pretend certain. that you hear yourself. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> important for sure. Yeah. yeah. So when you were younger, you said did, you did uh, club gigs and stuff. Did you do like weddings and all that kind of stuff too? Yes, we sure did. I was, I started playing clubs when I was way underage. I was 14. Oh. And I was playing drums at the time and singing. Oh. And I remember this one particular gig, uh, my cousin Willie Ray, I was playing in his band. And he, I didn't have a union card. And he put his jacket on me and his hat on me and drew a mustache on my top lip and told me to sing and play with my head down just in case the union man came to the gig that night. So we, wouldn't get, we wouldn't get shut down. Uh, but you know, my family has been some of my best teachers. Yeah. Um, growing up, you know, my mom was making records when I was a, a preschooler. My dad was making records when I was a teenager. I just grew up around it and loved it. Um, and and here we are, all these years later, still, still really love, really love. Yeah. 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 I was. This is kind of a silly question, but your last name, Van Hook, mm -hmm. such an unusual name, isn't it? 
it's an unusual name for for black people it's a dutch name yeah uh but you know i've, I've had this conversation with a lot of people over the years it's the it's the slave master's name i don't know what the name of my people are is or what it would be yeah um, but van hook is the name of my ancestors uh once we made it to this country and i have grown to be very proud of my name and i try to live in a way uh that will uh garner respect for a good name but yeah yes yeah, an unusual name uh and it's a, a dutch a dutch origin and uh and i love my name <laughs> well me too i was just curious if it if it was i didn't think it was a made-up name but mm -mm. i just was curious about that it's a mouthful though but yeah it's real <laughs> well it's it sets you apart you know yeah why not yeah yeah, yeah man yeah man i have a <laughs> i've i worked for many years with a pianist named phil phil strange mm -hmm. and um Sounds he lived funny. in japan for a long time and <clears throat> we did i think it was the first record that we we did a few records together and the <laughs> i got the record in the mail you know after we had manufactured it and it said phil smith and i was horrified and i called him and i said oh my god they made a horrible mistake and he said no no i i made my name smith and i was like why did you why yeah and he had been this was when he had been living in japan for maybe five to seven years or something and he felt mm -hmm. he felt like he wanted to blend in more okay smith will do that yeah it was yeah. really interesting after yeah. that he changed but yeah it was um i mean a name you know makes you stand out a little bit right and I have been asked, uh, would I consider changing my name for stage? And oh, my right. response has always been, absolutely not. This is my name. Why? Why would anyone ask you to change that name? <laughs> you know, some people. So I've I've been uh, in cahoots with some agents. They want your name to be John Smith oh. or Bill Jones, something easy. And uh, you know, if that's your given name. That's great. Uh, but for me, it's uh, it has always made me stand apart and my name gets mispronounced a lot really like what you know oh uh <laughs> the, the most uh most uh common one is the spelling with la capital m o n t but i get la my name is l a m o n t i get l a m o n t e i get l a m o n d i get l a m o n d e it's yeah. so it's your and first I answer to all of them most of the time <laughs> yeah um i'd like to go look at just a little bit of the phil collins video because it's 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 fun it's fun to see you with this huge <laughs> a huge uh audience <clears throat> you know yeah, we did that show in uh, Paris, Ooh, probably 10, 15 years ago now, this show. Now, who is that on the right? That's Amy Keyes singing her face off. So how many background singers? Is she? She's a background singer as well, right? She's a background singer. She's actually the singer that called me for this gig uh, at like, three or four o'clock in the morning, which is why I don't turn my cell phone off to this day, Kathy. Wow. Phone rang in the middle of the night and I answered the phone, hello. And she said, baby, I know I'm waking you up, but uh, you're gonna get a call tomorrow. And when this person calls you, just tell them yes. And I'm like, you know, who is this? She said, it's Amy. Um, Arnold McCuller can't do some field shows and they asked me who I wanted to sing with. And I told them to call you. So they're gonna call you tomorrow. Please tell them you can do the gig. And, uh, and and she said, okay, now go back to sleep. I was like, I'm wide awake now and I will be awake until I get this call. Um, and the call came, Kathy, and I go to rehearsal. I had worked with Phil once or twice before on, on uh, some of his records, but I hadn't done a live gig with him yet. So I get to rehearsal. I think we rehearsed in the third encore. And I did my homework, so I was ready. And I noticed that Phil hugged everybody that walked through the door. He gave him a hug, <laughs> but I didn't get a hug. 
<laughs> and I am very tactile. I'm a hugger, which is one reason why Corona uh, virus is so hard for me. I like to hug people and I miss getting hugged. But anyway, so Phil didn't hug me. I never told him about this too. We got to have this conversation. <laughs> so about three quarters of the way through rehearsal, he walks over and stands directly in front of my. Oh, sorry. Baby, go ahead. Baby, Wait a not even two feet away from me. It's on the other side of my mic. Hold on there. He stands there looking at me while I'm singing, while Hold the song on. is going sorry. down. He just sorry. stand Could there you... and I'm singing. Ooh, uh. Wait. Wait, you have to say that again because there was music playing. Go ahead. Okay. I'm saying Phil, about three quarters of the way through rehearsal, Phil comes over and just stands in front of my microphone looking at me. He's like not even two feet away from me, which is really weird and strange. And he stands there and I'm thinking, okay, is he trying to freak me out or something? What's going on here? And he's just looking at me saying, I'm singing like I know the part. So the song is and he walks away. And I look at Amy, I was like, what in the world was that? That was weird. And she said, just be cool. If there was something wrong, he would have stopped the song. I was like, okay, well, that was weird, but whatever. Uh, and we go on with rehearsal and break for the day. The next day, Kathy, when I walk in, Phil gives me a hug. Still, three quarters of the way through that day, second day of rehearsals, same song. He comes and stands in front of my mic, the same place. And he's just looking at me singing. And I'm like, I don't know what this is, but this is really weird. But anyway, <laughs> the song finally ends and he stays this time and he looks at me and says, can you be available every time I sing? And I look back at him, I said, I think I can work that out. And that was 22 years ago. Wow. How about that for just a cool story from you know, one of the most beautiful human beings on the planet. But I do think he was trying to freak me out a little bit. But <laughs> yeah, the first thing I was able to stay in the zone. Yeah, just to see what, you know, how you would react. But that's cool because he he could tell that you that he wanted you to be around. Yeah, and that's a big part of touring. It's not just about your the gifts uh with your instrument for being on the road. People got to want to have you around. Yeah. You got to be cool to be around. And uh, that's something I tell the uh, students when I'm doing a master class. It just, you know, kids in general breaking into the business, you got to have your game together and keep drama and confusion at an all time minimum. And you can work. But if uh, people have to worry about your drama or worry about you being on time or worrying about you knowing the music, doing your homework, you're not going to work as often because. You know, there's so many, everybody in LA is great, right? Here in New York, in Nashville, Austin, Texas, you don't have to, you can throw a rock and hit 10 great musicians. Uh, so the chance for you to be mediocre with your biz, with the business side of it, Kathy, that can uh, prevent you from working. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and on that note, <laughs> let's, now let's see. You with Phil Collins. Here we go.
Wow, pretty darn exciting. Uh, I'm just grinning from ear to ear. It's, it's so much fun being on, on stage with him and that particular band. We just always have a good time. Wow. And you and there were like three more background singers. That tour, uh, he went out with six singers. It was like uh, wow. Phil Spector. It was a wall of sound. Wow. Just beautiful. This last tour, we had four singers. Um, you know, and who knows what's going to be next. It's, yeah, it's just, just always a pleasure uh, working with my uncle Phil. Yeah, I remember for some reason, I just always remembered he, the story about how he took care of his voice and how he ensured his voice. I don't know if that was ever an interesting point to you or not. We never talked about it, but you know, success like that, I'm not surprised to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised to hear that, yeah. He always appears to be in such great shape, you know, and just with, I don't know, he just comes across as a really person with a good attitude and, you know, real solid person. He is all of that. He is all of that. Just, uh, you know, very successful in his own right. But if, uh, if we were, excuse me, Kathy, if we were all in a room and you didn't know this was Phil Collins. He's just a regular cat. Can sit around and be one of the guys. Yeah. You know, not pretentious at all. Just, just regular. Is he the person that you've worked with the most over the years? I would say he's the person I've been in their band the longest. But you know, we didn't work for the better part of ten years. Oh. Uh, just because he had decided he was done. Oh. Huh? And uh, thankfully, that didn't last forever and always. Yeah. Um, it's it's been interesting, you know. Some gigs are for a season. Some are for a longer season than others. Uh, I was with Rod Stewart for just under eight years. That was my first big gig. Like, I'm sorry, with who? With Rod Stewart. Okay. Where I met Catherine. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that was my first tour on private planes and, you know, always staying at the Four Seasons or the Ritz and, uh, you know, doing, uh, performing in arenas and stadiums. That was the first real taste uh, of that for which I am forever grateful. And uh, yeah, yeah and, and, and I had two stints with Diana Ross for maybe, you know, three or four years at a time. Uh, you know, but some things are just one-offs. It, yeah. it just depends. I'm just, uh, it's like being chosen for the uh, the baseball team in your neighborhood, the street baseball team. I just love when my phone rings for work. <laughs> you never know what's coming down the pike. And it's always <laughs> fun. Speaking of Rod Stewart, I um, interviewed, um, I interviewed Mark Jordan. Mm -hmm. you know him? Mark Jordan, he's, he's Canadian. He's a singer, guitarist, and he's written for Rod Stewart and sold like many songs. Oh. Mark Jordan, you ought to check him out. M -A -R -C. I will. Mark I will. With a C. He said he's Canadian or does he live Canadian. here? He's okay. Canadian. And he's a painter okay. as well. But his his writing, it's it reminds me a little bit of Bonnie Raitt, you know? Okay. Yeah. Right. Great song. Oh, and not only is he a great singer, but he 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 phrases like a jazz singer. Okay. But he's not he's not exactly a jazz singer because he doesn't. Yeah. That's not his repertoire. But he is wow. I really I became a fan of his, and his wife is a singer too. She's she's more along. She might be country and and acoustic rock or something. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't in, interview her, but. 
Yeah, check him out, Mark with a C. Mark okay. Jordan. Mark Jordan. Yeah, I think you would really, really become a fan of his too. You know. Okay. Yeah. Don't you find Kathy as a singer when you write the way your lyrics flow or do your lyrics flow according to their singability? It's 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 usually. Yeah, it's 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 something that works for me, but it's interesting. Uh, you know, some people that have sent me their songs to sing. I, every now and then I have asked, can I tweak this? I can I can sing exactly what you have written, or I can sing this word to replace that word just because it sings better. Yeah, yeah. It sings better. And and I think that's a gift that a lot of composers, if they're not singers, they may not have that particular skill set. Um yeah, yeah I, but I was curious. Yeah, it works that way for me. So I'm glad to hear yeah. it works like that for you. Too. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. You know, I generally write songs that I that I like, that I like. You yeah. know, I mean, uh, that's my reason. You know, yeah. I'm not really writing for other people. Occasionally I'll write for somebody, a friend of mine whose voice I really know, and I just have a vibe to do it. But um I remember there's there's a really great songwriter singer here in Los Angeles named Shelby Flint, who uh -huh. used to be also a big studios person too. And um I remember in when in the in the when how old were we? In the eighties, she was singing a lot and a lot of us jazz singers were picking her songs to sing because they're just mm -hmm. great songs, but not that easy. You really had to like the song because <clears throat> it was how she would sing it herself, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was probably one of my first introductions to singing a songwriter's material and realizing, oh, you know, this, they wrote it for themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. And very mm -hmm. interesting. And you have to really like it a lot, you know, to to work with it and make it your own, you know? Yeah, but that's the skill that we bring you, you as a studio singer. You're hired, you know, usually, you know, three hour call for one song. Yeah, you got to go in, learn this song, and now you got to sing it like you've been singing it for years. Yeah, and you just heard this song today. That's a uh, uh, that's part of this, you know, part of the skill that we bring to to the party. Absolutely. Um, and you know, some people are better at it than others. Uh, I take umbrage when I hear people say that any anybody could sing backing vocals. It's just not true. The, <laughs> some of the best lead singers are horrible background singers because they're not used to singing and paying attention to what the next person is doing. Yeah, They're used to doing what they do and have everybody follow them. Yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very special thing. I'm so thankful to be a part of the singer community here in LA. Um, and I'm not leaving. I'm, you know, I've done this record and I'm expecting some big things from this record, but I cannot wait to be back in the studio with some of my friends uh, singing together. <laughs> um, Anthony Kuchina, he's he would like you to talk a little bit about your home studio setup. Mm -hmm. Because it's right there. Because it's right here. Yeah. I uh, I record on Logic. I'm not sure exactly what he wants to know. I record on Logic. Um, I bought my dream microphone some years back. I used the uh, Norman M149. I just bought uh, the Shure SM7B, um, which is right behind me down there. I got to make some little adjustments to my boom stand, but uh, I'm going to start doing that, using that for my uh, live video snippets that I do for my social media pages, Kathy. Uh, I've been just singing a verse and a chorus of some of my favorite songs just with piano. And uh, yeah, getting myself set up here. I don't know what else I can tell you about my studio setup. I'm looking around to see what he would, what else he might be interested in, but you know, this, this is my little tracking room and uh, logic is, you know, particular thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I know enough about logic to really mess some stuff up if I'm not careful. Uh, <laughs> but, cool. uh, and I was afraid of it for so long, but I'm, you know, getting more comfortable and actually having fun. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you play some guitar too. That 
guitar was a gift to me from my uncle Clarence, who at home I hope is watching. Um, I haven't. I think the acoustic guitar is such a beautiful instrument. It took so long for me to feel comfortable playing piano. I'm just not ready to commit to a new instrument, but I gotta learn how to play guitar using my uncle Clarence's guitar. So it 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 uh, haunts me. It's haunting me right now because it's always in my face whenever <laughs> I come into this room. And I'm thinking about if I don't start playing it yet. When I whenever I do shows, I'm gonna bring my uncle uncle Clarence's uh, guitar so he can be on stage with me. <laughs> I have not picked it up to learn how to play it yet because I understand it's not similar at all to piano. It's an entirely different mm -hmm. instrument. So. I'm a little gun shy, but I'll get it. My feeling is that you would really like guitar. I think I would too. I think the sound is is just incredible. Yeah, just I incredible. And doing this country thing yeah. with some of these pickers that can do that uh, James Taylor picking thing, that's just brings tears to my eyes sometimes. So yeah, yeah I want to learn it. I just, you know, it's just, it's just going to be a big endeavor to start learning another instrument. And I'll get there. I'll get there. It is definitely on my list, but I gotta get this meeting. <laughs> well, Lamont, it's 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 right around that time. The uh, it's around um, you know close to two hours, five minutes away. Wow, so, that I went know, fast. It is does doesn't it? You're doing yeah. another interview coming up, right? Yeah, yeah. Who's that with? Absolutely. Well, this this is. Um, uh, for me, I'm doing an interview in conjunction with uh, Valerie, a photographer and great singer I was telling you about. Oh, yeah. I'm taping, uh, videotaping four of my songs on Wednesday. And after that, I'm going to take a break for a couple of days. And then we're going to do an interview uh, answering some of the same questions, some of the same topics we've covered today, Kathy. But I want to splice the interview in with these performances and have a program putting my uh, electronic press kit together to have bookers come to my website and book me for some shows, man. You know, I'm just trying to figure out how to do this uh, before, uh, while we're still kind of shut down, at least the music business is still kind of shut down. Uh, so that when things open up, I want to be at the front of the line. Garth, if you're looking for an artist to open your show. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like a nice guy. I'm sure he'll say yes. He seems like a great guy. And I know some people in his band and they all say he's great. Yeah, my great. husband. Uh, my husband was a lighting board operator on the Tonight Show for twenty years, and huh. Gareth Brooks was actually one of his favorite people because um, my uh, so my husband had his own separate room, and so the bands would come by, come in the room, see what he was doing, talk, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of stuff, and also my husband collect collects records he has like thousands of records and so mm -hmm. he would always bring a record if garth was there and he had a garth brooks record yes. he said that he was the nicest person one story he had was um at the gate of nbc you know there were all these people on the outside like you know oh garth you know yes. <laughs> and he signed autographs for all any everybody who wanted one and to be honest, man, they do yeah, it. They do yeah. that. They yeah. do that. Yeah, for our and and you know, he had a uh, Garth had a TV special. Corona's got me all crazy now. I, can, I believe it was pre-Corona, but it might not have been. Yeah. Uh, but you know, recently doing this, doing the same thing, Kathy came up on a group of fans and stayed and signed till everybody had what they needed. I think. Um, country artists in particular are very uh in touch with their fans yeah and as my uh as my uh music finds its audience and my audience finds me i can't wait to uh interact with them and uh hear how my music affects them and, and see them have a good time with some shows well lamont van hook thank you so much for being on Really appreciate you spending two hours with us and sharing your insights and humor and music and hopes and dreams. It's really been beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to the party. I had a great time. This was this was fun. <laughs> and I'm just going to tell the audience that tomorrow I have on uh, 
an incredible Brazilian woman who I found who is basically a composer, pianist, singer. Her name is Clarissa Saad. She lives in uh, Chicago, but her talk about being from a, a background, a musical background, her father and his brother <coughs> are very, very famous guitarists who had a group together, the Assad brothers. And that's how she grew up. She grew up oh. in that and she, she first developed into a composer, a serious composer. And um, anyway, that's going to be really fun. And then Wednesday, <coughs> excuse me, Pierre Chambers is also starting on kind of a more of a solo career. Um, he's a singer and he's, he's the son of Paul Chambers, the jazz bassist who played with right. Miles and yeah. And for years he had been working with, um, with um, Ellis, let's see, Chambers, Chambers, Ellis and, oh gosh, it just goes out of my mind. Anyway, kind of like a Lambert Hendricks and Ross group. Okay. And um, the woman, Lisa Herbert, her, her dad was a bass player and um, Mitch Ellis was Herb Ellis's son. So okay. the three of them had this kind of interesting background. And uh, so anyway, so he's, and he's kind of starting his, his solo singing too. Good. Yeah. Never too late. No such thing as too late. Nope. No such thing. Yeah. Nope. Jump in, jump in. Yeah. So everybody have a great day. Hopefully I'll see, <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Hold on. I hate to end on a cough. It's all right. Me too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wendelin Bolden, thank you very much for being here. And um, uh, yeah, have a great day, Lamont. Thank you again. You as well. Thank you so much, Kat. Okay. Bye. Take care.